What's up guys, Gong Rong Zong here. So a lot of agents have been hitting World Tier 4, taking on control points and strongholds at the highest difficulty. With that in mind, let's go through some endgame tips and tricks to help you conquer those evil minions taking over Washington. Coming in at number 1 that some of you may not be aware of, you can actually shoot a shield mob through the window in his shield, dealing full damage to him. To make things even better, his head is usually occupying a good chunk of the left side of the shield window, giving you a high chance of headshots as long as you aim for the window. For red shield mobs, it's easy enough to brute force your way through their shield, but for anything purple and above, try your best to aim for that small window. On their own, they have very very little hit points, and even yellow ones go down within a few hits. Tip number 2. If you didn't know it, you don't just have access to your specialization's grenades, such as flashbangs for the sharpshooter or incendiary grenades for the survivalists. You actually have the normal frag grenades that you can still switch out to whenever you want. And yes, that means even in the middle of combat. This gives you an average of 12 to 14 grenades that you can keep lobbing at enemies. Grenades also drop pretty regularly from mobs, and if you're doing an outdoor event like a capture point, you can always travel back to the White House to restock your grenades to full. So have no fear and throw them like there's no tomorrow. For tip number 3 on the list, we have blind firing. Blind firing actually works surprisingly well, and has a smaller hit area than you might think. As you can see here, I'm testing out multiple weapons on their blind fire capabilities, with the opposing wall being a close to moderate distance away. Most of them actually have a surprisingly tight bullet pattern. If you can imagine an enemy body being there, you can kind of see how a majority of the bullets will still land on their bodies, especially if they are rushing you head on. Regardless of how high the accuracy or stability bar was, the pattern seemed pretty consistent for each weapon type. Blind firing essentially means you can trade blows while being invulnerable, and let's not forget that more often than not it can make a running enemy stagger. It's an invaluable tool to be used against enemies that are rushing you head on, and I would encourage you to practice it on multiple encounters just to try it out for yourself. It might just surprise you in how far a range it's actually effective. For the next tip, we have the concept of falling back. The key to attacking capture points is that you don't actually need to stay inside the red demarcated zone. You can even start the engagement from outside of it, and also retreat far beyond its borders. As you can see in some of these clips, I am far beyond the red zone, but in a very good position to engage with the enemy. Remember that positioning is everything in this game. Scout out the area first, and find a good position to engage the enemy, one that would be advantageous for you, with multiple points of cover to retreat to in anticipation of them throwing grenades at you, which they most certainly will. And while it is true that you can't summon allies until they're inside the red zone, often it actually makes sense to not summon them straight away, as depending on the layout of the capture point, you might be placing yourself in a dangerous position that is too far forward. Remember, your allies will take a while to arrive after summoning, so you'll still have to deal with the first wave by yourself anyway. Also, an important point to take note of is that you can keep resummoning your allies. Don't be too concerned about helping them, or whether they die or not. I've experienced capture points where I was able to resummon them 4 to 5 times over. Even for the officer, who often goes down on higher level capture points, don't be too concerned about resurrecting him unless it's absolutely safe. In the same vein, for strongholds, don't be afraid to fall back to previous areas. Falling back to previous sections will not reset the health of the mobs or your progress in that current area. Sometimes they will chase you pretty damn far though, so just be aware of that. Now on to tip number 5. When trying to figure out what stats you want to use for any build, always make sure you consider the damage to elite's talent. It bumps up your damage by a crap ton. As you can see here, by stacking 6 elite damage talents, I'm able to consistently achieve over a million damage headshots on my marksman rifle and a consistent 900k to a million DPS on my rifle. 
considering how the game throws at you more and more yellow mobs as the difficulty ramps up. Like how level 4 control points consist of entire waves of yellow enemies, the damage to elite talent only exponentially ramps up in value. While there are of course other completely viable builds out there, if you want to go with a simple no hassle damage build with outrageous numbers, the damage to elite talent is one of the safest choices to go for, being fully competitive with crit and crit damage builds. For tip number 6, here's one you may not have considered. Just as our primary weapons have talents like Overlap and Waskily that have beneficial effects when holstered, so too do your secondary weapons. Yes, pistols and sword of shotguns can also roll with such talents, albeit rarely, so don't be too quick to disenchant, um, I mean salvage every single one that you see. The exotic pistol has a pretty nice one too, so it would be something that you want to aim to get. Plus, if you're in world tier 4 now, farm them to no end in preparation for world tier 5. For tip number 7, we're going to directly address one of the quirks of the AI. In what I have experienced throughout the game, and many others will also attest to this, the AI knows when you are aiming at them, and will take an extended period of time to pop out of their cover should you choose to do so. So what you can do instead is to aim slightly off-center, retaining the mob within your field of vision but not aiming directly above it. More often than not, this will encourage him to pop out, allowing you to quickly snap your reticle back and shoot him. Some have dubbed this as unfair, or that the AI is essentially wall hacking. Instead, perhaps I can provide an alternative perspective. Perhaps the AI, just like us, is actually fighting in a third person point of view, allowing him to see us when he's crouched behind cover, just as much as we can see him when we crouch behind cover. Interesting, right? For tip number 8, we have fire grenades. Enemies will very often try to get you out of cover with them. If you didn't know it yet, it is actually very easy to tank even a couple of these with 3 charges of your healing cam launcher and med packs. Even with my current build that barely has any attributes that add to defense, I am still able to comfortably do so. This essentially allows you to continue to stay behind cover and not expose yourself, as opposed to frantically trying to dash to another spot of cover that is far away. More often than not, exposing yourself to enemy gunfire is what is going to kill you, not the actual fire on the ground. So the trick is knowing when to just heal through it or to find another source of cover. Rule of thumb is never to panic. Look around you. If there's a piece of cover nearby, go to it. If you feel like getting out of your current cover would overexpose you, don't be afraid to soak the flame damage. Just be aware though that you can't actually aim while on fire. You can only blind fire while being lit. And now for tip number 9, those pesky LMG enemies that do a crap ton of damage while prone, and you can never seem to kill them. Well, if you didn't know it yet, this is because these guys actually wear bulletproof helmets that take a ton of damage to knock off. However, they do possess a weak point at the back of their bodies, and if you hit it, it causes their entire bullet pouch to explode in a rainbow of bullets. So instead of trying to meet them head on, throw a grenade onto them. This will cause them to get out of their prone position, exposing their body, or even better, their weak spot for you to fire away at. And that's a wrap. 9 endgame tips that I hope will be able to make your journeys into Division 2 that much more awesome. If you watched up to this point, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that I can send more awesome Division 2 guides your way. As always, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in DC.